This video is intended to help you do Excel project number two. And to start with, we're going to find the mean and the standard deviation of the raw data, which is column A. So remember that all you do for mean is to do equals average parentheses, highlight all of the data values, and there are a lot of them. So that takes a minute. and then press enter. So we have our mean of 3.30625. For standard deviation, I'm actually going to copy this so that I don't have to redo the highlighting part. And then I'm going to enter. And I'm going to paste it and I'm going to change average to standard deviation population. And then hit enter and there's my standard deviation. The reason the standard deviation is so high is there's a few outlying values. Now, we also have to do a probability distribution, which means that we have to do a frequency distribution first. So remember for frequencies, we use the count if command, and in the first position we put our range, which is again, this whole set of data. which I should have just highlighted, there we go. And then comma and our criteria. And in this case our criteria is that it's a one. We press enter, that's how many ones there are. Now I'm going to again copy and paste this and just change it from one to two to etc. So this one's gonna change to a two and then I'm gonna paste, oops, Shoot. I'm going to copy that again. Then I'm going to paste this and change it to a 3 and so on. So I'm going to go through and do that for every single one of these. As you can see, I've done everything and from 10 all the way down to 19, there are none of each of those numbers. The majority of our numbers are between 1 and 5. Now we're going to do the probability distribution. Well, the probability comes from the sum of the total, or the, the sum, of our frequencies. So, sum does not have an E on it. We're going to do a sum there. So it's 160. So that's going to be what we divide by to get all of our probabilities. So for the first one, we're going to say equals this divided by my sum. Now remember, we want the sum to stay the same, so we put the dollar signs on either side of that one. And then we should be able to drag this down, and it should only increment where the number is coming from. So this one came from D7, which is that. And this one comes from D8, so it did exactly what it was supposed to do. So we have our probability distribution here. Now the next thing asks us to draw a probability histogram. Okay, so we're going to do the histogram the same way we did the bar graph before. We're going to highlight all of our data, the X's and the P of X's. We're going to go over here to insert, and we're going to insert a 2D column. Now this is going to not do what we want it to do initially, but that's okay. So see, all these X's are not what we want. We actually want the little red down here. So we're going to right click on a bar and go to format data series and oh nope that's the we do want to close the width but we don't want to do that yet we're going to delete those data values we want to delete those and that gives us our p of x's over here and our X's down here, which is what we wanted. Now, now we're going to click on a bar and we're going to close the gap to make it a true histogram. So go down to gap width, 
make it zero, and click close. Now we have a histogram. Now because we want a good title and stuff, we can also, another way to do this is to go to chart layout and click on layout eight, which makes it not have gaps. And then we're going to put a title, number of credit cards per household which is a really long title but that's okay and this is this is the number of cards number of cards and this over here is the uh, the probability of of let's just we'll just put probability so this is actually the probability distribution probability distribution for number of credit cards per household there we go that's a better title okay so now we have this this histogram and this histogram is right on top of our data we don't want that so we're gonna copy it we're gonna select the whole thing we're gonna cut it and we're going to go to sheet 2 and we're going to paste it okay now that way it's in sheet 2 we don't have to worry about it now I'm gonna save so that's the probability histogram. Now the next thing we have to do is determine the mean and standard deviation using our probability distribution. So we're using this data right here and we're going to do mean and standard deviation. Well remember to do the mean we have to do each x times its p of x and then sum them. So this is going to be x times p of x in this column and we're going to say equals that times that. Enter. Now we're going to drag that down so that we get all of the 20 and then we want to sum all of those to get our mean. So for our mean we're going to add all of these up and I'm going to put it down here mean equals the sum of this column right here. Now, here in a minute we'll actually identify those. Now this mean, 3.30625, is the same as this mean, which is cool. Okay, now let's do the standard deviation. Remember to do the standard deviation we have to do x minus the mean square it and multiply times the probability. So over here we're going to have a column for x minus mu, then we're going to have x minus mu squared just like we did before, and then here we'll have oops, x minus mu squared oops, squared times p of x. So this one we take each simple x, so it's going to be equals x minus, and mu is down here. And remember we want mu to stay the same, so we put dollar signs around the, the letter. And that's x minus mu. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the formulas on the top row and then drag it all down. So this one is just this column, oops, squared. Oh, uh, nope, not H4, I4. There we go. So that takes care of that. And this one's going to be this column times our probability. So this equals this column times this column. Now, take all three of these. We're going to drag them down. This saves a little time because we dragged all of them at the same time. Now, Remember our variance is just the sum of this last column. So I'm going to put variance in this variance and that equals the sum of this column right here. Do, 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 do. 
and the standard deviation is the square root of this number right here, which is 2.307588, which if we look up here, look at that, it matches the standard deviation. So for these, this is how you do this stuff. The last two, you will determine the probabilities and you can just put them on sheet two. Just answer questions F and G on here and then you'll have everything finished. Oops.